step one, schedule a financially focused date night. Ooh, that sounds so, so fun, much right? Fun. Yeah. <laughs> so step two is trick your, your significant anyway. Um, <laughs> what is the perfect bite? That mix of flavors, textures, colors, and aromas that come together in one amazing amuse bouge. Big ideas expressed in small bites. That's our podcast, a variety of inspiring topics to make your financial goals and dreams a reality. Brought to you by Clark County Credit Union for your weekly serving of food reviews, financial education, and life hacks that your future self will appreciate. It's the perfect bite of interesting information to start your week. Welcome to episode 41 of The Perfect Bite. I'm Crystal Price. And I'm Shannon Hiller. Let's dig in. We love trying new dishes here at The Perfect Bite, and Jesse Ray's barbecue is a new favorite. Next, we'll answer a listener's question about how to talk to their significant other about shopping too much. And finally, we will share how writing a letter to yourself can help you show appreciation and gratitude this holiday season. Each week here on The Perfect Bite, we'll visit a locally owned Southern Nevada restaurant we hope will become your new favorite. This week, we are sharing a new personal favorite, Jesse Ray's Barbecue. Have you ever heard of them, Shannon? I haven't. I have never been. This was like one of those gems. I don't even know how I found it, but I went there for the first time and I will definitely be back. So I visited the location uh, with a credit union friend. I have to give a shout out to her. Anne from New Senda Credit Union. She's from New Mexico and was out here vacationing. Um, she's a listener of the show. So I told her to let her know. <laughs> <laughs> so we tried some place close to the strip since she was staying down there. And um, Jesse Ray's Barbecue, all of the, the barbecue flavor that you can think of, like of a good barbecue, like in your backyard, but like home style barbecue food was there. So where they are located, they're on Valley View off of Russell Road. It's in a small little strip mall. And if you don't pay attention, you'll definitely miss it. Looking at the website, it said that they are an award-winning restaurant with awards from Best of Las Vegas. They were voted Best Barbecue Sauce in Las Vegas and Best Barbecue Ribs in Las Vegas from People's Choice. So very highly acclaimed. Do they sell their sauce? I don't know. I wonder because that's, I mean, well, yeah. When you take me back, we'll go. Yes. We'll no, we we're going to go as a team and we're going to load up. Um, we're going to wear our sweats. and <laughs> It is that good. Like you need dance. to try all the things. <laughs> and it's really cool because the menu items are all themed. So it's like um, there was one that was called the Duke, the belt buckle, the jive chicken. And of course they had the Jesse Ray. So what I ordered was called the Jesse Mac. And it was a updated version of the Jesse Ray, which is a sandwich. Um, so it had pulled pork um, with a brisket and a middle bun and then their Vegas slaw and barbecue chips. To be honest, I did not pay attention to everything that was on this. There was so it was like the Big Mac, Big, Big Mac of barbecue. There was yes, a little. <laughs> yes, it was. It was. Sounds huge. <laughs> <laughs> barbecue style. Yeah. Um, it was this massive, sa massive sandwich. And um, we're going to post a photo on our social media pages of this sandwich, me holding it. So go check that out. Mm -hmm. And so there was a quote on there, like a review. And somebody was saying that the uh, Jesse Mac was like one of the best barbecue sandwiches that they ever had. And so all I s did was go off of that review that they posted on there. And I just ordered it. I didn't look at what was inside. I was like, <laughs> I'll just figure it out when it gets here. <laughs> Is there mac and cheese on it? There's not. Oh. Yeah, yeah. But I did order creamy mac and cheese as a side okay. um, item. Super good. Um, I ordered a drink with it. It was like the combo special. So in total, I spent $20. Um, but if you just do the sandwich alone, it's $13.50. So I think it was pretty That's reasonable. Yeah, yeah, pretty good price for, for what you got. And again, the sandwich was massive. Um, we're going to wear our sweatpants and you, you can do it. You <laughs> okay, can do what it are we going to get when we go back? When I go back, I am going to do the loaded and one of the loaded in Vegas items. And basically, it's like a plate that is loaded with either waffle fries, tater tots, mac and cheese, or barbecued mashed potatoes. And then they add on the meat. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> so um, Barbecue mashed potatoes? Yes. I would go just for that. That yes, sounds good. Yes, yes, yes. I think I'll probably do like the waffle fries or the mac and cheese. But yeah, they all sound amazing. Um, I would definitely recommend that if you go to this place, if you know anybody that loves barbecue, loves or likes it, and make sure that you have plenty of room for all the food that you're going to have um, because the portions are very generous. So if you, our listener, has a recommendation for a restaurant or a dish for us to try, um, please send us a message at theperfectbite at ccculv.com. We're always open to new ideas. Mm -hmm. 
So today we're going to cover a topic that was submitted to us over social media. And the question was, how do you have a peaceful conversation with your significant other when they shop too much? And I have to say, I sort of cringed when I read that right. because I'm like, what did my husband submit this? talking about me? <laughs> <I know. laughs> they could, they could. But yeah, so this is a tough one because money really can impact so many areas of our lives, but we're hesitant to bring up money matters. It can be such a sensitive topic. Do you agree or yeah, disagree? Yeah, I think one of our earlier episodes, we talked about like it bring a tear to tears to people's eyes because they get so heated in these conversations. So definitely. I know it's important to talk about it, but I can't help but be defensive sometimes because I am the spender in our family. <laughs> so if it can, ever comes up about the budget, I'm always like, I get a little just like on edge, like, oh, I'm going to have to fight for this, you yeah. know? And so it is sensitive. So we turn to an article in psychology today, and I wanted to use this source over others that I found because I think it really got into the heart of the relationship side of communicating about money and not just maybe the budget or the, the tactical side. This was like, how do we feel about it? So okay. the key points from the article were uh, money is the second leading cause of divorce oh. behind infidelity. Jeez. Wow. So it's serious, right? Um, second, Americans argue with their partner at least monthly about money. And third, as you begin communicating with your partner about money, you can have mindful conversations about money instead of arguments. So our, our submission was peaceful conversations. I think mindful money moments also sounds nice. So that's okay. what we're striving for here. So there are just a lot of emotions surrounding money, especially shame, anger regarding debt, or even fear. So just avoiding the conversation about overspending or shopping is really common, but it can be costly. So if you and your significant other are facing this, we're going to turn to the Psychology Today article for five steps about how to talk to your partner about money. And we're just going to touch on a few of them today, but we'll link to the article so you can read all the additional details as well. So step one, schedule a financially focused date night. Ooh, that sounds so, so fun, much right? Fun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So step two is trick your, your significant anyway, um, <laughs> schedule a time in advance so you can both be prepared for the conversation. It's not something you want to spring on them. Like you've already gone to dinner and then you're like, I brought my budget with me mm -hmm. here, you know, or cook your favorite meal at home or have your favorite dessert. It's something to look forward to. I think this is like, I remember I was in college and we had a testing center. We didn't take our tests in class. We had to go to this separate testing center. Okay. And one of our professors said, you need to build this positive feeling about the testing center okay. and they're like go do something um fun or enjoyable there so when you go there and they're like if you're dating someone go make out in the testing center oh. <laughs> hey, i love so your place like, i love the testing center <laughs> oh the last time i took a test i was so happy to get out of there but yeah so we need something positive we're gonna do something fun um i have a friend who plans a yearly retreat to discuss finances and goals with her spouse that's like advanced level course right yeah. there right but it's kind of the same concept it's something fun to look forward to they have a weekend away but they go to plan their financial goals for the year okay and I have to say like their head and shoulders above what I'm doing so it's sort of something to emulate there so after you have this financial date once maybe make it a monthly date or something that you at least check in uh, weekly or some kind of a schedule and so by doing that it's you know we can nip these problems in the bud and celebrate our successes. It keeps the communication line open as well. It's not something that we just avoid. Crystal, do you see yourself having a financial date night? So if you had asked me probably a month ago, I would say definitely no. Um, I like my date nights to include food. Um. <laughs> you can plan your favorite food. No, just food. Um. <laughs> but um, actually I heard um, somebody on a podcast recently and they did suggest something like this and they said to start in a fun place. So to like list out your dream, how do you, and I can't remember the wording for it, but how do you want to, like what are your dream bucket list for, for spending? Like what are the things that bring you joy? So for me, I might put like shoes and new jackets on my list, but for my husband, he might put, um, I don't know, garage stuff, mm -hmm. just we'll say stuff, so that you get a better understanding of what brings them joy. So that way when they spend money on those things, like you are supportive of their spending costs. So I think I would definitely do a financially focused date night now. I like that, asking them what their priorities are, because then, like my husband would rather buy a few things that are higher priced. Okay. I would rather, I actually saw a Dolly Parton quote about this and I was like, mm. that's me. She, she said, I'd rather go to Kmart and fill my cart with a hundred <laughs> things than go buy like that one expensive thing. Yeah. Because for her, it was that like, 
you know, the, the process, whole, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. so yeah, I'd rather go to Target. That's my version. And just like buy a couple of things. That little entryway, the dollar and $3 yeah. section. Yeah. So much that fun. little hit of retail therapy there. So, well, I say we challenge each other to try to do that. That sounds cool. Okay. Step two, keep an open mind. As we learned in previous episodes, we all carry unique money mindsets when it comes um, to money. We have different upbringings, cultures, environments that help shape how we think about our finances. And so much of that came from childhood. It can really influence our current views about finances. And so finding out maybe how our partner grew up with money and asking them, to share some emotional experiences, we can have more empathy when we find out how they grew up with money. Crystal, do you think that your childhood shapes you now with your money mindset? Oh yeah, for sure. I think my growing up, my dad was always the one who like had the spreadsheets and he just made sure that the bills were paid and he kept track of, you know, this one's got to be paid on this date. This one's got to be paid on this date. And he just kept that on track. So I am that person in the relationship. My husband, not so much. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I have the opposite. <laughs> my mom was the le- peeping the ledger. She'd always be at the kitchen table. You knew she was doing bills with her her uh, checkbook, mm-hmm. and you knew that was something important to her. And so for me, I always felt like money was like scarce mm, because okay. of that. It was always like, sorry, we can't do that. And so sometimes I just need that, like I said, that little target hit to like feel like I earned this money. Yeah, I get to go spend it. And so that gets me into trouble because I have a spouse that doesn't (laughs) treat it like that. And so where's that coming from? Right. I know. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) So understanding, you know, why someone might be a spender or the motivation behind why they want to save. I think that's really helpful. And just keep your mind open to their motivations. Uh, Step three, be assertive. So when you're talking about finances You may bring up something that, you know, is a shared experience or even has personal trauma tied to it, but try to stay in the present, express your feelings. And we've heard this before, use an I statement rather than a you statement to try to reduce defensiveness. Yes. So I was thinking, okay, for our, our listener, what would Mm -hmm. you say? Something like, I feel anxious when we don't have enough money to pay our bills each month. Yeah. Yeah. There's like not z- like you make me feel anxious. <laughs> right. Or even I feel anxious. We don't have enough money because you spend it all. You yeah, know, yeah. it's just this is how I feel. Mm-hmm. What do you think? And then you kind of start from there. And so just express your feelings really clearly and and directly. I think it really could help. Um, it demonstrates respect for yourself and your partner, but also keeps your feelings top of mind that you're going to say, hey, I, I need to tell you about this, how I'm feeling. Yeah. And then go from there. So I really liked that. Uh, step four, take baby steps to avoid overwhelm. This is a big topic. Let's pace ourselves here. You know, we don't need to just dive in like to my friends. We can retreat, right? Yeah, that's, that's not happening. <laughs> that's not going to happen. So just talk about daily spending and then work up to retirement and life savings. These are big conversations. I think having a system for organizing it and communicating, that would really help. Because I know for me and my husband, we have this budget. There's a spreadsheet. We both know how to get get to it and look at it. And it just creates that transparency where we trust that we're working towards this goal with yeah. this with this uh, spreadsheet. So again, uh, accountant husband for <laughs> our listeners, <laughs> he keeps me in line there. And then I think the other thing is um, making sure that you bring in a third party if you need to. This is such a sensitive topic. Maybe you have a financial planner or an advisor, someone who can mediate between you. They're the expert. We're just going to listen to that person. It's not me saying this or you're sniffing other it's it's someone else saying hey guys you really need to do this establish an emergency fund pay off your debt then invest in the future like they can help map it out for you Uh, we have a lot of tools that you can do that at clark county credit union on our financial education program called bonsai it can help map out your retirement planning all those different things paying off your debt that would be a great place be like hey check out this article i was looking up we can plug this in this Mm -hmm. calculator just get started Um, And the fifth and final step is learn together. Starting a conversation about finances can be intimidating because we don't know all the fancy terminology and someone might be throwing out all these acronyms and terms and you're just like, I'm out. Yeah. (laughs) Sometimes I feel like that. Yeah, it is. Like, I don't need to know all that. I'll just, I'll be fine. So if it's more of a, a learning and growing together experience with your significant other, I think both parties would be more likely to participate and just make it a point like, hey, I found these resources. I talked to this company this agency, whatever it is, or this cool podcast called The Perfect Bite (laughs) that we listen to and just share that information and work together. Not only will this help you feel more confident about money matters, 
but I think you'll just feel more comfortable. Like, I don't know, think about anything. Like the more you do it, the more you're comfortable talking yeah. about it. So that's why I like about, I mean, our podcast, we, we did start it to start having financial conversations in a more real mm -hmm. way. Somebody told me that they will put the podcast on and that just sparks a conversation. And next thing you know, they're talking that. about, you know, this and, you know, our podcasts are they're so small, just nice little bites, mm -hmm. 12 minutes to 20 minutes. So it just a few minutes to kind of get you thinking outside of what you were would have regularly been talking mm -hmm. about. So, yeah. Well, I recommend that to everybody. That sounds great. I think this can be a fun topic. We're planning for the future. We're setting goals like a vision board. We talked about that in one of our previous episodes. Like these are things that we can look forward to and mm -hmm. not feel like, oh, this is a drag. I have to talk about finances. No, it's the money that we're using for those, those goals, those dreams. Like, hey, I want to retire and have a motorhome and like tour the world and or yeah. not the world in my motorhome, but tour the country and mm -hmm. like see the world, whatever. What are the accessories you want to get for the motorhome? Exactly. Like I need money for that. Let's put a plan put out there. Put that vision in your and mind. Get, I think definite numbers to like, how much does it cost for a motorhome? How much should I be saving monthly to get to that goal? Mm -hmm. Um, that will bring life to it. That helps me want to save. If it's just saving to be like, I need to save 10%. You know, I'm just not yeah. going to do that. I just, I need to have like something that I'm working towards a goal that is tangible and that helps me. So I think to our listener, I hope those, those tips helped maybe just start with one of them and just start from there. We'd love to hear some progress. If uh, you try any of these steps, please let us know. And so I just think this can be something that's fun and worth the sacrifice when we talk about how to reduce spending and increase savings. And now a break to hear from our sponsor. Clark County Credit Union members have received more than $70 million in bonus dividends since 2001 just for using the credit union services they need every day. Since CCCU is owned by our account holders, they earn the dividend, not shareholders. This year, we returned a $2.4 million bonus dividend to members with auto loans, credit cards, mortgages, and checking accounts. Open an account today and start earning your own bonus dividend. Funds privately insured. Next up is our future self segment inspired by the Happiness Project. We are a few days away from Christmas with New Year's right around the corner. For today's segment, I wanted to talk about celebrating the present with a letter of gratitude to your future self. I visited futureme.org who specializes in writing letters to the future you at a desired time like six months from now, one year, three years, five years, or even a customized date. How does that work? So I'm like, hey, I want to send this to myself in one year. And yep. then you write, this is what I hope to have in one year, or this is just It's like really a... whatever you want to do. Like, hey, Shannon, you've been doing really mm -hmm. great the last six months. Um, I see you're trying hard. You go, girl. Okay. And you just send it to yourself That's as a fun. nice reminder. So, like yeah. a little time capsule that comes yes. to you later. Okay. Exactly. So this is also a great way to relive memories with vivid detail, acknowledge growth and achievements, set goals for the future, and to declutter your mind to find some headspace. Awesome. So with the holidays and the new year, I wanted to go deeper with writing a gratitude list and giving our listeners some tips to help them get started with their own list for their future selves. So Shannon, have you ever created like a gratitude list? I have. I I kept a gratitude journal oh, for wow. a while. Yes. And I would I was in a, a place that I needed some positivity. And so I tried to list out five things every night that oh. I was grateful for. And when you do that and you know it's gonna come at the end of the day, mm -hmm. you really look for things yeah. to put on a list. And I remember thinking like, gosh, today I can only say like I was so happy that I woke up mm -hmm. or that the sky was blue or whatever, just really simple things. But then as you got into it, you really could think of really specific things. And I try to teach my kids that like, you don't just say like, Oh, I'm so grateful for whatever, you know, food. Yeah. Be like just really specific. And so because I did it every day, mm -hmm. I had to get really specific with it. And then I haven't done that for a while, but during the Thanksgiving months, I've also done like thankful Thursdays oh. where we list out again, things we're thankful for. And then, sorry, one more. So <laughs> I would do this gratitude tree and I'll share it with you if you want, but it's yeah. like, it has a tree that we would cut out and print like on blueprint paper. So it was really big. Okay. And then leaves and each leaf you had to write something that you were grateful for. Oh, that's cool. And so I actually cool. did it last year for Thanksgiving with my whole family and I had a ton of leaves printed out and everyone just like, cause you know, it's kind of cheesy to be like, go around the table and say what you're thankful we, for. We do cheesy. <laughs> and my kids hate it. And so this is more like, I can sit here quietly yeah. and write out what I'm thankful for. And then we 
um, put it up on my uh, sliding glass door. So it was big like that. Okay. And everyone had like five or six leaves. They could get more if they wanted. And then it was really cool later in the day to just see people like standing yeah. in front of a tree and being like, oh, like that reading their so things. Great. Do you have yeah. a photo of your last year's tree? I'll look. I think I did take a photo. I feel like we should share that okay. on our social I'll, too. I'll so we'll have a burger photo and we'll have the tree. <laughs> yeah. I think it is a really good habit. And I'm, I'm glad we're talking about this today. Nice, nice. So yeah, it it can be a daily habit if you incorporate it. That incorporate all the things that you have um, to be grateful for, and those are things that you can include in that letter to your future self, mm -hmm. or even um, a regular habit to improve into your daily actions, like you did for your general well being. Mm -hmm. So practicing a morning gratitude ritual, waking up and thinking of three things that you're grateful for to start your morning. Um, you know, the view, my health, uh, shelter, food. The, basic mm -hmm. or very detailed. Also incorporating gratitude into your daily life, expressing gratitude to those around you. So, you know, Shannon, you, you had your list. Did you sometimes incorporate maybe like sharing with your family, like Miles, I'm so happy that, you know, you give me a hug every night mm -hmm. or, you know, whatever that may be. Or well, that friends. would be a lie, but yeah. <laughs> um. <laughs> Or even like coworkers too, mm -hmm. you know, I'm so happy um, that, you know, you, you, pick up the I don't know I don't know yeah. what the scenario would be but you know I think I could do b better at that mm -hmm. and I think one thing I try to do is when it pops into my mind I will send someone a text or something easy yeah. just like thank you like for example I just got my family photos back I thought they were going to be a disaster <laughs> they turned out great and I, I had a little a little moment that I was just so grateful mm -hmm. that these documentations of my family and their growth I just it was so it made me so happy and I just sent a little text to the photographer like hey thank you like you captured this beautifully yeah. I really thought we weren't going to get any good ones because the weather was terrible and my mm -hmm. my hair looked terrible <laughs> and of course I was dreading getting them but yeah just like if you think about it it really took me like 15 seconds yeah. to send this text to her and hopefully she just knows I appreciate her so I think if we can do those little things in the, in, there, in the moment. I think that is key yeah. because sometimes I'm like, I should tell this person thank you. I should get them a card. It's like I try to go too far when I could have just, yeah, mm -hmm. easily sent a text. And then they would know right then that I feel um, gratitude towards right. whatever they did Because I will 100% forget. Yeah. I, I, <laughs> I won't do, do the big so, thing. <laughs> um, I'm sorry, friends and family and coworkers, <laughs> but I do appreciate you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and finally, um, another thing that you, you can do, which is what Shannon did, is to start a daily journal and list out things that you're grateful for. Over time, these habits can impact your health by improving your mental health, magnifying positive emotions, reducing stress, building strong relationships, boosting your self-esteem, and of course, many other areas that it might help your future self. And those all sound like really great reasons to show <laughs> gratitude. So I'm going to definitely get back into that habit. Thank you. Yeah. We want to hear from you. Send us your financial questions or money topics that you'd like to learn more about. And don't forget any fun local food recommendations. Our email is theperfectbite at ccculv.com. Thank you for listening to this week's episode brought to you by Clark County Credit Union. For additional money management tips and financial calculators, check out our website at ccculv.org. Now that was The Perfect Bite.